When I met my wife's father, I didn't know I was meeting the happiest person who has ever lived. And he told me a story that I want to make sure my children know. And here it is. He grew up in a little town called Richfield, Utah. And in Richfield, Utah, there was a little dairy there called the Ideal Dairy. And he said there was one of these days on one of these trips to the Ideal Dairy that I was picking up groceries with my mom. And he said the little doorbell rang on the door. In walked a girl about my age. And he said, I'd seen her before, but I'd never really noticed her before. I said, I was just struck by this girl. I said, were you in love? He said, no, I was eight. And I said, did she know you were staring at her? And he said, oh yeah, but she wasn't about to look over. <laughs> Fast forward into high school. He said the girl was very studious, loved school, but very shy. And he said, me on the other hand, he said, I love school, but all the homework kept getting in the way of all this fun we were trying to have. Well, he was in his counselor's office one day, and he said, the counselor said to him, Rod, who are you taking to prom? And he said, oh, I don't go to those type of dances. And the counselor said, oh, that's too bad. I, I think every girl deserves to go to prom. And he said, I'd never thought of that. Maybe I should ask someone, but who would I ask? And he thought, I'll ask Marlene. Marlene was the little girl from the candy store who he'd always watch but never talk to. So he calls her up and he says, Marlene, this is Rod Savage. Wondering if you might go to the dance with me. He said she was speechless. She didn't say a word. I talked to her later and she said, I didn't know who he was. She's, she's doing this with the phone, talking to her mom. Who is Rod Savage? Right, and her mom's going, I don't know. And you know, he's there like, she hasn't said anything. And she said, well, okay, I'd love to go to the dance with you. And he said, that's great. And she hangs up the phone. He thinks he's done his duty. And she said she spent the next four days searching the school for this guy. <laughs> they go out on that date. Now he said something magical happened when we went on this date. She laughed harder than she'd ever laughed in her entire life. Out of high school, these two get married in the St. George Temple. And they decided to start a little family and they brought this baby home. Rod said to Marlene, this baby needs a tour of our house. And she said, he's two days old. And he said, it doesn't matter. He needs a tour. He's asleep. It doesn't matter. Let's go on a tour. And he took this baby on a tour of the house, every room. And he said, this is the family room. This is where we're going to have family home evening. This is the TV room. This is where we're going to watch John Wayne together. And this is the bathroom. And this is the bedroom. And oh, and he just took him through the whole house. And she rolled her eyes and followed the tour around the house. Have you ever had something that you just did once thinking, oh, this will be funny. And then all of a sudden you thought, we got to do that again. And we got to do that again. And all of a sudden it becomes a family tradition, the tour. So... All of my kids have been on the tour. All of the grandkids have been on the tour. And Rod has always been this powerful influence for good and positivity whenever you're around him. My wife said that she went down to visit her parents and her mother had just had some tests done and she had stage four liver cancer. And she said, my dad was trying to be his positive self, his happy self, but you could tell he was struggling. The hospice nurse came over to Rod and and he said, Rod, uh, judging from her vital signs, it looks, like, it looks like it's going to be very soon. So why don't we get her into bed for the last time? She was in a wheelchair there with the family. And he said, okay. And he starts to wheel this wheelchair back down the hall. When he stops, and moments of faith like this have to be recorded. They have to be passed down. He turned to his children and he said, let's take mom on a tour. And my wife said he wheeled her around and he went first to the living room and he knelt down in front of her and he held her hand and he said, 47 years of family home evening. How did you put up with this group? And then he took her into the TV room and he knelt down in front of her and he said, Marlene, how many shows have we watched together in here? And he knelt in front of her and he talked about each individual child and all the investment she had put into each one and how great they had become. Then my wife said she saw her dad pick up his bride, laid her in her bed and knelt by her until she passed away. I asked him later, I said, what were you thinking at this moment? And he said, you know, she's just so great. I couldn't let her last day be sad. 
look at this incredible life. And he said, I'm a happy person. I'm a happy person. I'm a cheerful person, and that's not going to change. If I need to live without her for a little while so I can appreciate her more when I get her back, I can do that. I can do that. That story needs to be told. My children need to tell that story to their children. And they need to tell that story to their grandchildren, but it depends on us telling those stories. We need to commit to making sure those stories get passed down.